Good afternoon, Roy Oppenheim here for Zoom at noon by Oppenheim Law as well as Weston Title and Escrow. Believe it or not, I keep saying this, but this is now our 16th week that we are Zooming live during this uh, uh, crazy topsy-turvy world that, that we all have become so familiar with has become our, our new normal. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to avoid liability and being shut down during COVID-19. And it's kind of crazy because as the state of Florida continues to try and open up and then decide maybe certain things shouldn't be opened up like beaches and bars and nightclubs, uh, the European Union has just announced that uh, Americans are not welcome in Europe. Uh, our military is being advised not to visit the state of Florida because the state of Florida is now considered the number one hotspot in the nation. And at the same time, we have retail operations that are trying to open up and, and stay and stay open. And that's why today we have our guest, my dear friend, Eddie Dykes, who uh, has been running uh, Western Jewelers for, for almost uh, 20 years. But before we start, I want to, as usual, thank those people who helped make this possible. Again, Oppenheim Law, Weston Title, Jeff Sherman, my partner, Ellen Polowski, my partner and wife, as well as Paolo Vergara, who has been helping uh, with these Zoom presentations from, from the beginning. So let's, let's get going, if I may. And by the way, for those of you who are uninitiated to this, uh, this is supposed to be interactive. I expect questions, comments, uh, and, and maybe even some challenges along the way uh, in terms of we're trying to achieve here. And again, we serve as a guide. We're trying to get us all through this, trying to figure out what's going to happen, what's around the next curve, and what this means to yourself, your family, your businesses, uh, your vendors, your clients, and how to stay safe and remain uh, calm as well as successful during this economic and social crisis that, that we now have found ourselves in. So uh, as we proceed, we're going to do the weekly unemployment economic update, the pandemic update, what Broward County, Miami, Dade, and Palm Beach County are doing how this is all affecting the real estate business. And then, of course, we're going to be talking to Eddie from Weston Jewelers about how he, as a retailer at the Hard Rock, is dealing with all this craziness. Next page, please. So as I indicated, we've been in business Oppenheim Law since 1989. We founded the firm, Ellen and myself. At that time, Jeff Sherman's been with us for over 10 years as a partner. And uh, the same thing for, for the title company. Uh, we've been serving the community uh, for all these years and particularly have unique expertise in having taken people through the last economic crisis, representing thousands of homeowners during the, uh, the real estate foreclosure crisis and, and the last great recession. Who were we to think that this crisis was going to somehow be greater than that one and that that was our training ground to assist all of you here today. So again, without you, none of this would exist. We thank you for joining us. And again, we expect you to ask some questions and participate interactively. As I indicated, this is our team. Uh, let me mention a little bit about Eddie, if I may. Ed, Ed's a co-founder and CEO of Western Jewelers. It's a family-owned and operated business that he owns with his wife, Tracy. And uh, Eddie's born in Argentina. He's a member of the American Watch Guild, the Jewelers Vigilance Committee, uh, and, and Jewelers. And most importantly, he's a dear friend and someone that, that we hold uh, very dear. So uh, let's proceed, if we may. The last time we talked about the variables that make this time the best time for selling or refinancing your home, and this week still is the same. And uh, this week we're going to talk about the guidelines and procedures that businesses must follow in the Tri-County area to remain open uh, and to reduce civil liability risks. And, and I've mentioned this before, and I just want to mention again that to a large extent, people are assuming the risk when they now go indoors, whether they go indoor to a restaurant, if they go indoor to a store, if they go indoor. To, to a, a, any kind of office, and, and many places are now starting to use uh, releases just like the, the, the president did during his last uh, uh, convention that, that he held asking people to sign waivers. And so typically, uh, that is gonna be the norm, and we're advising many of our clients uh, to use these kinds of waivers so people understand that, that there are inherent risks that go beyond the responsibility and liability of the business. Having said that, if certain businesses do not follow the norms, they could be held liable, and we're, we're gonna talk about that a little bit down, down the road here. Page, please. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the weekly unemployment and economic update. Uh, it's, it's very interesting, and these charts are, are, are very descriptive of, of what's going on. I want to share these with you. Do we have any questions? Okay, let me let's proceed. So what we're, we're seeing here is uh, monthly retail sales, and it's kind of fascinating how, they, how retail sales have continued to increase dramatically since uh, 2009 during the recession. And, and capped really at January 2020. 
And then there was this precipitous decline, literally falling off a cliff. And then we've seen primarily because of the government stimulus, if, if, we, if we see that big hook that's coming back with the, with the orange ball at the top, we're seeing a, a remarkable increase in consumer spending, much of which comes from the PPP, much of it comes from unemployment benefits, as well as from other government programs. And so we've seen this, this, this two thirds uh, rebound in consumer spending. But we'll talk to Eddie about how long that will actually last. In fact, Eddie, how long do you think that's going to last once the government stimulus uh, program ends? If I can get you on. Hey, you're muted. Hang on. One sec. You're muted. You have to unmute. Got it. Okay, start again. I, we, we, we had you on mute. I apologize. So, so how long do you think the, 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 the retail surge will continue? Uh, in terms of uh, one C stimulus programs, that um, how um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I I give it maybe an, another forty five days, I would say, and then it's going to plateau out. That's where I see it. I don't so see it for more than that. Don't you think also a lot of people have paid a lot of money, and so as long as they can spend it, they, they may want to because they're so cooped up. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I see a lot of pent up demand occurring right now. Um, again, um, being very conservative um, as far as how long that's going to last for. Um, I'm just concerned about possibly having another, you know, if, if they, they close us down again, um, it's, it'll, it'll be yeah, disastrous, you know, so I don't, I don't know where we're going to be at with that. Let me go to the next slide, but thanks for, for, for for sharing that thought, because you're, you're literally in the trenches on the ground. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is kind of fascinating. This is the unemployment road to recovery. We're seeing different recessions here and how long they took. We look at the light green one, it went out six years. That was from the Great Recession. All the other spaghetti strands took one, two, three, four years. But the, the problem is the blue hook at, at the bottom, if we can just show that at the very bottom, that is us right now. And that little hook back up is where we have come back up. So at that, if we come up at that same pace, you know, it's going to take, you know, two and a half years, but the reality is it's not going to go straight back up. It's going to start spaghettiing out. And so most advisors are, are suggesting that this could be six, eight, 10 years till, till we're back at a, at a full recovery. And, and the answer is who, who really knows, but it is, it is fascinating to compare where we are right now in, in the scheme of, of, of things generally. Let's proceed. Okay, let, let's, let's go over the pandemic update a little bit because this all has a lot to do with, with, with where we are right now. Okay, so what we're really seeing here on the left is what the country looked like just in February and where we are here in June. And the red obviously speaks for itself. And uh, you know, this is kind of like a war, Eddie and I were talking about this earlier, and, and right now, uh, as the New York Times would suggest, you know, we're not really winning this, this war if you go to the next page. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's been these massive increases, particularly in Florida, you know, we're, we're, we're literally exponentially uh, doubling every, every few weeks right now. And, and uh, um, the CDC, as well as the WHO, is, is suggesting that, that whatever we're doing is not really working. And so we all need to figure out how to make this work for ourselves and, and uh, how to try and keep the economy open to, to the extent possible. The good news, of course, is that there haven't been that many new deaths yet, but the CDC and the WHO are suggesting that there's usually a lag between the number of cases and the number of deaths. And so that's, that's kind of the, the big crisis. And of course, the other issue is that a lot of young people are getting it this time around. And the problem is that while they may do fine, they're going to infect older people who, who typically don't do as well. Next page. So as we talked about, you know, this, this Florida spike has been substantial. Beaches are now closed for July 4th weekend. And um, there are lots of orders, reverses, openings of bars, as well as nightclubs. And so uh, the good thing is that the, the people who are getting sick are, are younger, but of course uh, they may infect older people. And, and the question now is how, how do these businesses stay safe and, and legally uh, protect themselves from, from any potential liability from their customers as well as their employees. Specifically, let's go over Broward County real, real quickly if we can. So uh, Broward County is now requiring face masks to be worn 
at all retail and food establishments, and that was starting June 15th, and that all businesses must post signage about facial coverings, uh, that the signs uh, have to be in place where they remain visible. Uh, it suggested that they not only be in English and Spanish, but also in Creole, and then starting June 26th, businesses that don't enforce the law uh, you know, are gonna be substantially fined, and repeat violators will be subject to fines up to $15,000. So uh, uh, a lot of building inspectors are now, are, are, are now running around actually trying to enforce this particular law. And so most businesses are now starting to comply, but there was lack of compliance, particularly with bars and nightclubs until very recently. Next. Right, you got a question actually, Brian. Do you think that the waivers for businesses will be enforceable? Do I think the waivers will be enforceable? I, you know what, I, I think it's an assumption of risk. I talked about this before. It's very similar to like when you do something that's inherently dangerous, like going snow skiing, you know, on the back of that ticket, it makes it very clear that you're waiving your life, that you're waiving your, your, your rights in terms of liability if you slip and fall and hurt yourself because it's something inherently dangerous. And what we're suggesting here is that going out, going inside somewhere is, is a, unfortunately effectively an inherently dangerous thing today and that you choose to do it at your own risk and if someone's being good enough to keep their business open to serve you as the patron, uh, you can't then turn around and sue that person unless they are falling below the standard of care. And so while they, they, there may be a waiver of liability as it relates to simple negligence, willful and wanted disregard for the other person's health and welfare cannot probably be waived under any circumstances. And there are situations out there now where some employers are, are not doing the right thing. And so waiver or not, there's probably the potential that they will be sued anyway. But if everyone's trying to do the right thing, they're following the CDC guidelines, they're following the county guidelines, they're following World Health Organization recommendations under those circumstances, you know, I think that uh, people uh, will probably be okay. Eddie, you want to chime in there? Um, I didn't hear. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no volume at all, but now I'm, I change over to my phone. <laughs> Okay, so what we're talking about the Broward County requirements in terms of what uh, is required of, of a merchant today. And, and we're talking about, you know, what's the possibility of being sued. And I was saying that as long as you do the right thing, the chances of being sued, especially if you have a waiver or a sign, uh, you know, that, that could be helpful. So I was just curious right. what, what your thoughts on that, especially at the Hard Rock, which is such a large place in the first place. Yeah, so at the Hard Rock, they have something called Safe and Sound, and they actually are actually auditing us um, uh, either today or that we're abiding by all the rules. Um, there's, um, of course, there's an area, of course, to be six feet away from each other, and there's like little um, stickers on the floor that they put in our actual establishment. Um, I have uh, cleaners in every counter so that we can, and everybody can clean their hands. And so we're abiding by all the rules. Um, there's a safety glass of the POS system. Um, so, uh, you know, the only problems that we do see a slight problem is, you know, everybody must use a facial mask when going in there. And some people, you know, they keep it a little bit lower and not where they're supposed to. So um, that's the only issue that I see. But other than that, they are going around cleaning thoroughly. Um, they're taking everybody's temperature actually coming into the hard rock. Um, so if anybody has a, above 100.4, they're not letting them in, which is a great thing. Um, they're working on about... 30, about 40 percent capacity right now, but they do say that there's going to be about a hundred percent capacity this weekend. It will be pretty full, so we'll see what happens then. First of all, 100.4 is a, is a low migraine fever, you know, low grade fever. So yeah. So yes. Yes. And I'm not a doctor, so I won't, won't chime in on that. But but tell right, me, exactly. what happens if someone wants to come in and not wear a mask into your establishment? What happens? Um, well, we um, explained to them that they must wear, wear masks to protect themselves and, of course, to pro protect others and us, of course, as well. Um, and we just tell them, please put your mask on. And if they proceed not to, um, we actually have security that's actually around us constantly now. And they just tell them, you know, they take them. I've seen them walk them outside and then actually walk them out off the premises and just say, okay, you can't come back. You know, so they're really strict about that. Extremely strict. And, and I understand you're, you're offering free hand washing for every single person who comes in the store? Yes, we do. So as soon as a person walks into our establishment in both stores, um, basically we sanitize their hands coming in and we sanitize their hands leaving. So if they go to touch a piece of jewelry, they have clean hands and it's all sanitized. The jewelry has been all cleaned and sanitized. We actually sanitize the, the store every single morning um, using the proper chemicals that the CDC recommends. 
Um, so this, both establishments are probably as clean or cleaner than your home right now. Um, we're even changing the air filters uh, more often as well, um, every couple of weeks instead of on a monthly basis now. Any Are you saying that every customer must sign a waiver of liability, and if so, when the business is dry out? The what? I'm sorry, again. Sure. Are you saying that every customer must sign a waiver of liability, and if so, wouldn't the businesses dry up? Uh, no, they're not, they're not signing a waiver. No, I don't have them do that. But I do basically have them sanitize their hands in and sanitize their hands out. I don't have them sign a waiver. I, I don't think anybody's really doing that right now. Right. Does the Hard Rock have a sign, up, or does your store have a sign? It does. Um, there, are, there is signage, yes, that's in uh, English and Spanish, and then I understand that we might have to put it in, do it in Creole as well. I don't know what the story is with that yet, but uh, it's in English and Spanish, um, you know, saying that they must wear a mask coming in, they must sanitize their hands. And the good thing about the Hard Rock is also is that every, probably about 20 feet, there is a hand sanitizer um, out in the hallways and, of course, in all the casino area. And in the casino area, they're actually wiping down all the machines. And I've seen it. They have all these, they call them safe and sound people that are there that are actually cleaning everything um, and wiping everything down. As soon as somebody steps off uh, or steps away from one of the gaming machines or wherever they're at, they're, they're there cleaning right away. Let's, let's go to page 15 if we can, just to stay there. And uh, actually, we'll go, we'll go to uh, 16, actually, Miami Dade County. Okay, so Miami Dade County uh, is now requiring uh, everyone to wear masks, even, even on the street. Uh, the signs have to be at the point of entry of, of every establishment. Uh, again, they, they, the signs have to be in English and Spanish, and I believe also Creole. Uh, do's and don'ts. Uh, make sure you can breathe through your mask. Uh, wear it whenever yeah. you're out in public. Make sure it covers your nose and mouth, and of course, wash up. You don't. Uh, use if you're uh, under two years old and use surgical masks or other PPP if it's intended for healthcare workers. Again, there's a fine for 15,000 bucks in, in, in Dade County too for establishments that don't follow this. We saw that South Beach was having some problems a, a few weeks ago. Hey Eddie, I, I don't know if you saw, but there's some casinos in Vegas that are now being sued by their employees because yes. they, the uh, proprietors of the establishment were not adequately protecting their employees, particularly after employees, other employees had gotten the virus and those employees were not particularly told and, and, and were not instructed to take further precautions. Yeah, um, I did see that. Um, I really believe though that Hard Rock is really doing a great job of taking care of their people. Um, they, they closed down right away once they saw there was the issues back in, in March. And they really are um, taking that extra step to make sure that it is a very clean and sterile environment. And they even have, like I said, those safe, those safe and sound people, but they also have extra security to make sure that, that they're, um, they're abiding by all the laws. So this may be a loaded question, but you know, the, the beaches are closed and you're gonna have a full hard rock this weekend. I mean, what are they gonna be doing with the swimming pool? Uh, that's a really great question. Um, I asked them and they're, they're going to work on having plenty of security there outside um, and making sure that people stay their distance, uh, making sure that the groups of people are actually uh, groups of people that have been together um, and not just uh, random people um, joining other people and making it an unsafe environment. Um, so um, they're, they, they're taking a lot of precautions, they told me. So I think it's going to be uh, pretty safe there. So uh, let's go on to the next slide. Moving to the new normal, I, I, there's a question actually that, uh, that I have and that, that someone just asked, and that is uh, what's going to happen when the government stimulus uh, programs end? What, what will that do to the economy? And uh, I'll, I'll give that a first shot. First, uh, first of all, there, there are probably going to be new stimulus programs that are going to come along. Uh, they may yep. be focused towards uh, uh, people not being evicted, not being foreclosed, that there'll be some fund that possibly will be set up in the state of Florida has, has some funds that set aside. And then uh, I guess, you know, we're gonna have to see what happens, I guess. But what, what are your thoughts on that, Ed? Um, I agree with you. Um, I think there's gonna be, um, whether it's gonna be more PPP money going out there or, or whatever else, you know, in other ways, of course. Um, but there's definitely going to be more funding um, 
if they, if by any chance they have to start closing things down, um, I think, I, you know, I know that they closed down gyms today. Um, and uh, I'm concerned about, uh, what is that? Maybe in another state. I'm not sure if that was in Florida. Oh, not, not in Florida yet? Oh, okay. Okay, I thought that was um, in Florida. Um, but um, uh, I'm just concerned about restaurants now possibly closing down since bars are no longer to serve, uh, allowed to serve uh, liquor any longer. Um, and I do have my concerns, of course, about retail. Um, as long as we are all abide by the laws of what we're supposed to do. I mean, literally, we're in a war here. This is the pandemic war, I call it. Um, thank God we don't have to send our children to war. Um, this is the only thing that they're asking us is to wear the mask, stay six feet apart, and constantly clean your hands. I mean, if we all do that, um, the numbers will definitely go down. You know, it's interesting. I was reading a study uh, that in Japan, the subway system stayed open and the usage level remained around 80%, kind of unlike like in New York, where the usage level you know dropped around 15 or 20%. And the question was, why is that in, in Tokyo, where the, the subway cars are usually absolutely packed, were they able to keep the, the COVID level so low? And the answer is, people culturally have always worn masks. And more importantly, they never talk to you. People generally don't talk to each other that much on the subway. Either they're tired or it's just cold. And so when there's less communicating and less breathing on each other and people are wearing masks, it, it really does work. And so all, to win this war, all we have to do is just follow some basic instructions. You know, it's, that's the great irony here. Right, right. It is a war, for sure. Let's talk about Palm Beach, because, you know, what's really strange about the state of Florida, we were one of the last states to really shut down, and we were one of the first states to open up, and now we are the shining light of having the, the, the largest hot spot in the world. And so, obviously, uh, we're, we're not doing something correct, but in Palm Beach now, they're trying to, to catch up a little bit, and there, too, uh, you know, people have to wear masks, uh, signs have to be put up. And again, the violations, uh, violations are much lower in Palm, in Palm Beach than they are in Broward or, or, or Diddy County. They started at $250 and $500, but it is for individual violations. And now I think they've even set up a, 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 a phone number where you can call to report violators if, if you uh, want to do that, which I'm not advising, but it is something that, that is available. Um, next page, please. So in terms of real estate business, uh, you know, one of the things we want to talk about a little bit is how, how do realtors continue to stay in business and, and do it safely? And if we uh, go, to, go to the next slide, we, we see that obviously everyone should be wearing a, a face mask. No one should be touching stuff. Uh, people should be washing their hands constantly. The usual stuff that, that we've heard over and over. But more importantly, there, there are some great 3D imaging uh, systems that are, that are being set up now where realtors are able to show up at a, at, a, at a home while their client is actually not at the place and almost feel like through virtual reality that, that they are physically present. And so uh, for realtors, you know, I know some are still doing open houses and, and uh, it, it's probably not something that, that is the, the, the best thing to do. Is there a question? No, okay. Um, we'll, let, let's go to the next slide then. Um, property showing rules, again, People should be wearing protective masks. They should have a sanitizer, practice social distancing, uh, avoid touching surface, surfaces. And then uh, when the showing's over, you know, obviously remove your trash. I mean, most of this is just basic, basic stuff. It's unfortunate that in some cases we even have to explain this to you or to ourselves because in some cultures this has been the norm for, 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 for you know, literally uh, 20 years or, 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 you know, even longer. And so... Culturally, we, we have to accept some changes, and I know there are some people who don't want to do that and feel that they're, they're constitutional issues, but the real issue is, you know, your right to survive and, and to live, and, and these are things that, that are good because it's a way to protect you as well as, as everyone else. What, what, what are your thoughts on all this? Oh, look at that. Cute picture. You see it? Yeah. Okay, now I see, sorry. I, I kind of lost you a little bit for a little bit. But no, I mean, I mean so what, what are your thoughts long term about, you know, in terms of, of the business thriving, you know, keeping people safe? I mean, how does that, that should jive, you know? Uh, um, you know, as far as keep a, keeping people safe and, and um, 
Um, I do believe, you know, of course, as soon as that vaccine comes out, um, um, I've been talking to a few people and some people that I know that are pretty close to the medical, you know, they're, they, they, they're, everybody's talking January that that's going to be when we possibly come out with a vaccine. So that's the, that's going to be the big boom. Okay, we come up with a vaccine and I think that the economy will just take off um, and we'll, we'll see numbers that we've never seen ever before. Um, until then, uh, it's going to be up and down. It's going to be like the stock market, basically. You know, it's going to be a great day, uh, an average day, um, a day that just plummets, and then another day that just, you know, because it's, it's a lot of this is going to be controlled, especially retail and everything. It's going to be controlled as to whether or not people can actually go out to the store and actually make the purchase. Um, we're doing quite a bit of e-commerce now. Um, we've bumped up our e-commerce in, in a big way. It's um, starting, of course, in March. We had no choice. Uh, luckily, in January, we came out with a brand new e-commerce site. So that helped. Um, and I find that e-commerce <laughs> business is just absolutely booming right now. This idea of pent-up demand would be consistent with the roaring 20s. I mean, here you had the Spanish flu in, in 1990. Right. right? And then, boom, the roaring 20s, right? I mean, everything was wrong. I mean, the economy was right. Roaring. People were going crazy. They were going out. I mean, you know, the prohibition was lifted. I mean, there were so many things that, that were going on at that, at that point in time. Uh, and, and, you know, everything just, just, just came up. You know, a lot of it was pent-up demand and people just... I mean, right. That, 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 I think the same thing will happen. Absolutely. Um, the only thing is, please don't take away our liquor, okay? Don't do that. Yeah, if we have to have liquor, I, it doesn't matter, <laughs> for sure. One or two questions we have, and then we're going to have to call it call it a day. Let's see here. Uh, I, I've accompanied buyers agents with their clients on property tours, uh, and the things buyers look at can never be rendered in virtual tours. So thankfully, buyers are not substituting site visits with virtual presentations. I think I think that's a, uh, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, there are a lot of people, a lot of homeowners that really don't want. To necessarily uh, have people come through their homes, and so you've got yeah. the, uh, the, I mean, the best home to sell is a home that, that where people are not living there anymore. So you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to deal with both sides. You just have to deal with the side of the people who are looking, as opposed to the people who are still living in. Right. Uh, right. Any other questions? Sir? No. Okay. Uh, anyway, I, I think we're we're out of time. Eddie, you want anything? So listen, you know, this was great. I want to thank you so much. Thank for you. Sharing. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, everybody, please wear their mask. Please abide by the laws. Please make sure that everybody around you do the same, okay? I appreciate being on. We will be on next week again, Zoom at noon, with another topic that will be right on point based on what is going on at that moment uh, that's going to be concerning all our lives. In the meantime, uh, you know, be safe and be confident, and uh, we're all in this together. Take care. Have all a right. time. Thank you. Take care. Take care.